Wukong and Wukong taken away along with Cassidy, Lucian and Lulu. And I'm wondering, Elisa's with up. that Lucian ban, are they going to try and lock in? No, they're going to go straight away. Lee Sin picked in there for Amazing. Now, I wonder if uh, the Elise is going to be a consideration here for Alliance. These are some very, very quick bans, and it tells you that both of these teams are basically ready, I think is the best way to ex explain it. If you know your opponent is going to go with this sort of strategy, it allows you to react quite quickly, and so far the game plan seems to be positive. Alliance taking their time on these picks now. And they're also trying to take everything away from Forgiven. You can see the Lucian taken away, and they're already thinking Caitlyn, of course, four taps. They're going to try and put Forgiven in an uncomfortable place. Teams have tried this before, though, and it hasn't really worked. He'll fall back to Jinx. So he will fall back to Jinx. We have also seen Forgiven playing Ezreal in the past, depending on what the rest of the composition is going to be. Just in terms of numbers, Forgiven's played Lucian eight games, which is why it's banned. And then he's played six times on Caitlyn. So out of the team's 17 matches, 14 of those are on two specific champions. Alliance have made it very clear that Elise is not a priority because the jungle was already locked in for the Copenhagen Wolves. They also went for Thresh while Annie was available, which means we could be seeing maybe an Annie alongside a Jinx. We'll see what the Copenhagen Wolves decide to go with this time around. Of course, it does mean that the likes of well, a lot of champions other than LeBlanc. And Kalthus, well, that's a champion that Froggen almost certainly wants, but it does leave a lot of doors open for Froggen. So Kalthus has still played Kale in the mid lane even after the changes. Yep. I believe he's the only mid laner that's done it. The other big farm heavy champions like Gragas, Ziggs, Orianna, they are all still up. And so uh, the LeBlanc was actually banned out. So for Froggen, the option or the opportunity to go for a farm heavy lane is still there for him. Yeah, the Ziggs, of course, being available. You can see, of course, Copenhagen Wars, they did lock in that Annie and the Gragas. So that means it will be unlimited on the Annie. We'll see how that works out for him. He's been hit and miss over the last couple of weeks. Well, the last two weeks he's played fantastic, but the weeks before that, eh, a little bit shaky. But Nidalee, that's an opportunity for Froggen. And as a mechanical player, he doesn't tend to miss those spears. I mean, if you can think he can land everything with Anivia, just think what he can land with Nidalee. Yeah, he, and I actually think, if I recall correctly, it was Fnatic that ran the Nidalee uh, against Gambit last week. And they played a composition where they were very mobile. They didn't pick fights. They waited for Poke to go down. And then once Poke landed, they then engaged and then they then pushed for maps. So this is quite a smart pick. We did see Tabs was locking in the jungler for Shook and he was considering the Evelyn. The thought process was there, do we want Eve? The only reason I highlight that, even though Elise is locked in, is teams are actually, I think, moving a little bit away from Elise, considering she's banned out so often and she's not played in scrims. Teams are learning to play effectively with other champions. Regardless, Elise is locked in and Shook's gonna be on it. Yeah, this, again, Ziggs being left on the table, not being taken. So, we'll be left. We do see the Copenhagen Wolves deciding what AD carry will they go with? Will they fall back to that Jinx or will they go with the Ezreal? They need mobility, it seems here. So I actually feel like the Jinx is not too terrible in this situation because there's very little that's going to jump onto the Copenhagen Wolves. Their top lane is most likely going to be Renekton or Trundle. It is something that they could consider. And generally, when you run a Jinx, you don't want to run it into hard engage like an Annie, and you don't want to run into uh, uh, anybody that can dive on you. So. We do see the Jinx locked in, but the Trundle is being thought about by Youngbook in the top lane. I know for a fact, Wicked absolutely hates this champion. We had the interview with him Rox, last week, and he was talking about how he was trying his best to get the team to ban this out. He absolutely detests playing against the Trundles. Yeah, he really does. Yesterday, however, he had a very good performance on the champion itself. Yes, he, he, so, he absolutely loves playing it, but he hates playing it against there's, it. There's two points that is that is there. With the Trundle Ooh. being locked in, there's some very good scaling. I don't know if Olaf is an actual consideration or if it's just a troll. If you follow Wicked on Twitter, he went past an Allianz bank that was on Olaf Top Street, quite literally. Oh, he did the same thing yesterday and just calling it out. Renekton is a little bit more likely. It's something Wicked has played multiple times in the past, and I think assuming Wicked wants to get a little bit more aggressive, he can potentially shut down Trundle. What I want to know is, is Youngbuck going to go for the Triple Dorans? Triple Dorans into Renekton is what allowed Wicked to beat uh, Mima yesterday. So the tools are there if he wants to. Ooh, he's thinking of the Aurelia. He's discussing it with the team and I think they're arguing it back and saying, are you sure on this one, Wicked? But it will be Aurelia. He hasn't got 100% win rate on it anymore, but it is his signature champion. So this will be the fourth time that Wicked has played Aurelia in the LCS in the top lane. He's got three wins, two losses leading up to this game. He's got a very good KDA, 14.5. In this matchup, 
I think both of these champions are going to scale very well, but I prefer the power that uh, Eternal offers in a team fight. That Pillar of Ice cannot be discounted. It is, it is an incredible disruption tool, and it really allows the Copenhagen Wolves to control and zone alliance if they're able to force team fights. Well, they're just transferring all the champions around. Actually, they've got to be pretty quick changing around. They do have a 20 second timer on that one, so they had to lock them all in just before that counted. Both top laners currently sat with that teleport, so we'll see how that one works out. I recall a conversation with Froggen where the teleport was supposedly not available, according to Wicked in the top lane, and yet the opposition teleported in and turned that fight around. So, best keep track of that one this yeah. time around. I think in terms of compositions, I feel like the Copenhagen Wolves is a slightly better well-rounded comp. It can do a lot of things effectively, but you cannot discount the range and the poke that Nidalee is going to offer. Well, we're checking your votes before each game and, of course, over on Lolly Sports. And looking at this one, well, it's pretty close. 56% of you have chosen the Copenhagen Wolves over 44% for Alliance. This is a 5-0 Copenhagen Wolves. I think their recent uh, run of performance is, is showing well. It didn't work out for SK in the previous game, unfortunately, but you can never discount Gambit. And I think for this game, you know, Alliance, they did look pretty good yesterday. They, they played patiently. They played controlled. They've got a comp that they need to do a similar thing with now. A lot of range. Caitlyn, Nidalee, even Elise throws out those volatile spiderlings. We'll see how well they uh, control the game. Well, this is, what, fourth place versus seventh place. If my Mary serves correct in the standings currently with the Copenhagen Wolves, they're going to try and make it six wins on the row, taking down Alliance. They are starting out as the blue team, and Alliance are the red team. This is game two of the day. If you've already missed the first match, well, Gambit versus SK was a fantastic one, and while well, Alliance are using up all their pings, and now they're going to have Sorry, no pings available. So for the record, uh, the same thing happened yesterday. I think I'm going to have to get in touch with the referees and file an official complaint. I believe we should be able to say this is a disruption of the broadcast. Uh, slow, early, <laughs> level one, and the ping warfare is all that we can talk about. I'm not expecting any team to really go very deep, and as it stands right now, it's just everybody covering their own bases. Well, technically, they are saying there's a missing champion on it. Not too sure what's going Let's on. Let's not justify it. It's, it's horrible and should be stopped. <laughs> it should, should be stopped now. So, no early invades from these teams. And honestly, other than Millennium, we really don't get to see that too often anymore. No, we do not. And it's part of the reason in the next patch, those ward trinkets are going to be pushed back just a little bit. And they'll be respawning it, or going to be have a ward at 155 on the new patch as opposed to 130. In theory, giving you that additional 30 seconds of darkness means that teams are going to have a little bit more time to play with. Part of the reason we have such slow starts to the game is because of the fact that teams are going to be able to throw down a ward shortly, and there's so much information to work with. You never want to make a play unless you're 100% confident that you are outplaying your opponents. Ward Warfare and Ping Warfare. At the moment, though, it is going to be Amazing Young Buck and Kowtide all leeching off on the blue buff. So that's the start for them. Meanwhile, red buff start for Alliance. You see Shook ready and waiting to go for that one. Wicked will be helping her out just up the top there. So, standard lanes for both of these teams. What do we expect? How do we see this one going? So let's start in the top lane between Young Buck and Wicked. What we have seen from Wicked's Irelia the few times we've seen in the LCS, he runs out of mana very, very quickly. So if Young Buck is able to uh, play a bit of a harass game and force Wicked to use his stuns and his dashes onto Young Buck, once Wicked runs low on mana, all of a sudden Young Buck's going to have the advantage. I also think the sustain that Young Buck has on Trundle is going to be more effective than Irelia in prolonged fights. But in immediate team, uh, immediate one-on-ones, I really should have a little bit of advantage. Well, this bottom lane generally tends to be the focus point once they hit level two. You can see some good poke onto Forgiven there from Tabs, really making sure he uses that headshot proc on towards Forgiven. He will manage to land the Piltover as well. So good poke, and it's Alliance hit level two first and bully them straight out. Yeah, immediately pushing them back. Forgiven's actually taken a lot of damage early on, so he doesn't want to get caught. They've caught Unlimited. Death Sentence and Flare on Unlimited. He's taken low, the Ignite being used, but the Piltover... I don't believe was used by Tabs there. No, I don't think Tabs actually cast that one. We did see him just landing those auto attacks and limited now, forced incredibly low. This is how the Caitlyn Thresh lane, in theory, should go against the likes of Jinx, who is shorter on range right now. And as it stands, Tabs and Nif need to make sure they don't get ganked. Something that Amazing has done very well in the past and something that we've seen in the previous game, Jesus was able to roam against the heavy pushing Caitlyn Thresh. We'll see if anyone from Copenhagen Wolves wants to do similar. Oh, cheeky backwards barrel rolls from Kowtard onto Frog, and then we'll see 
how this one develops in the mid lane. Kaltard is has to be effectively a melee champion. I mean, he is in there. He has that barrel, which a lot of people in the maybe lower levels tend to use to farm, which we also saw Kaltard doing there. But most Gragas these days do tend to get in their melee the last hits. And it makes it very effective right now because if Kaltard is in and amongst the wave, it makes Froggen's Javelin Tosses much more difficult to land. As long as Kaltard is calculated in his decision making, he can do well. Yesterday, if memory serves, he gave up a kill to Peke, if I recall correctly, or if it was last week. He was playing Lulu at the time. He actually underestimated the early damage that Gragas has thanks to his uh, attack damage steroid from his Drunken Rage. Yeah, that belly slam into Barrel, quickly catching him out there. Frogger, no, not giving up any of that CS, making sure he gets all those spears in just the bout right there. And he's actually kept ahead of Kaltan in farm. That's incredible, really, for an Italy. So we did see that young buck actually backed away. So he, he moved out of lane. He's now coming back up as the wave is going to be pushing towards him. And he's already got two Doran's items. We seen yesterday Wicked win for three. I want to keep my eyes on young buck in his decision making, if he feels two is enough or not. I also want to see which way Wicked's going to build this one. Almost certainly will be a Trinity Force, but it's a question of how he starts it off. Will it be that Sheen proc that seems to work out very well? He's just going to keep on last hitting, churning down, trying to get as much down on these minions, and he is pushing quite well on towards Youngbuck. Yeah, he is doing quite a lot at this stage in time. Wicked needs to be auto-attacking to obviously get that sustain up, whereas Trundle's passive will give him HP when anything dies. Amazing gets caught out by a Caitlyn Trap, and we talked about how somebody needs to move in and try help out this duo lane, amazing, was the first to attempt it. It didn't work out this time around. No, we do see them continuing that farm, and it's actually very even between the two at the moment. Countard continuing to push right up against the tower there for Froggen. Yeah, what I did see is if you look at Froggen's skill order, he's actually got two points into his Javelin Toss, and he's got two points into his Primal Surge Swipe. So that's actually the heal. And when he goes into his Cougar form now at level 6, it'll also give him more AoE damage, which will allow him to counter push the wave a little more effectively. You have to give props to Froggen for staying even on CS at this early level on Italy because it is very difficult against the AoE and the poke that Kaltard's putting down. I mean, Kaltard's been in Froggen's face the entire time. Yeah, he's really doing a great job of last hitting on that. But given standing on one of those traps, making sure and actually almost baiting Nif into that hook there. Nif just waiting. Full mana bar for Nif as well, so he's really been playing passively in that lane, which I feel actually would suit the Copenhagen Wolves. Yeah, I think the Copenhagen Wolves will be fairly happy to give both Trundle and Jinx time to farm up. Uh, Greg is obviously the wave clear and the damage he has is very good. Instead, they're making the first play on the tower. Making great use of Frog, and he tried to back away a moment ago, and he's got no mana in there. They're putting a lot of pressure on this one. Shook's making his way down here, but look at that. They've already chunked off half the hit points from that type mid tower. Yeah, and that's because of the fact that Nidalee's got no low level wave clear. In order for her to get on those minions, oh, they've caught a limited. The hook goes in, the flay lands on towards him, but he just turns it back around, puts the stone down, the chompers on towards Nip, and actually good damage trade back from Forgiven. I think that was a little bit calculated and limited and Forgiven realizing they could turn around. Now they're on tab and here comes Shook. This is a great bait though. Shook's going to come in and limited almost certainly will be the first blood, but who will take it? It will be Shook. Yeah, very, very well played. Shook was in the right area at the right time and I think Unlimited being a little over that's not Forgiven. The cocoon landed and well, if anybody else would have reacted quick enough, they would have got themselves the double in the bottom lane. Yeah, not this time around. Tabs had his flash, decided to hold on to it, didn't jump in there. That was a very good play. And Shook being involved in first button at least, it has it is something we've seen before. And very importantly, he managed to help out that bottom lane even further. And more importantly, what I hate to see and hate to say, Unlimited is involved in that first blood again. It's something that is fairly regular, but the supports do tend to get picked on, of course. Ruby Crystal was picked up by Unlimited, so making sure he gets some health on the next time around. So when you play a champion like Annie, uh, in many ways similar to Sona, and my reasoning for this, no escape. You know, no built-in mobility really, no built-in uh, way to deal with the gank other than landing a perfect stun. And in this situation, Unlimited, even though he did stun up both Tabs and Nif, Shook was able to repel away from that W and he, he came down and managed to get the kill. So if you've got hard CC that can lock down a squishy target like an Annie, you can jump onto her. You wait out her Molten Shield once the E goes away, she loses that armor, loses that MR, and you can squash her down. Youngbuck has recalled for the second time, we just caught a glimpse of it, and he's returning to lane with a giant's belt. He's actually struggling against Wicked in these early stages. He's falling a little bit behind in CS. Yeah, we'll see how that one works out. Kaltar's going to get himself that blue before the mid lane. We also saw Frog and going away, get himself the 
pretty much the completed Athens and Holy Grail. Hasn't quite got the final recipe of that one. Nif and Tabs, they have gone back, and it's a BF sword for Tabs up against the second Doran's Blade and Vamp Scepter for Forgiven. So that lane was already an advantage to Tabs and Nif, and now with the big damage bonus they've just secured, they should be able to take even more charge or control it. What I'd like to see from Alliance is using some of those wards to get vision in the tri bush in the river and then almost pull Amazing or Countar towards them. And when that happens, you can use the teleport from Wicked or have Shook nearby for a counter gank. You see Shook, he's already moving towards that tri bush. Well, Shook's headed down there. We'll see where Amazing goes because wherever Amazing goes, that's when the kills actually do happen for Copenhagen Wolves. And as of yet, He's just taking away that red buff, not quite close by, so we may see a second return kill from Shook here. Remember, the flash still available for Unlimited, but not for Forgiven. Barrier is up. The Death Sensors doesn't land, and they're going to try and turn some of this damage back around. Ooh, we did see Kautai trying to head on down here. And Amazing is lingering by, but it's going to continue taking songs. So just a little bit of poke back and forth. I think if those uh, uh, skill shots had landed, maybe something could have happened for Alliance, but they didn't. So Copenhagen Wolves get away, somewhat unscathed. You're actually seeing Unlimited moving in to get some vision. He's a little bit overextended. And look at the poke on Forgiven. Because he's going for the dragon, Shook. We didn't quite see it there. Trying to take it down with those spiderlings. Shook does come in there, but he gets cocooned up there. A lot of damage on Amazing. Has to safeguard away on towards Unlimited. The rest of the lines move in. That barrel coming in there. Explosive cast comes out. Too late, though, and Shook took it with the smite. So that was a little bit risky, but Alliance made it work. They were able to respond quickly enough. Amazing forced a safeguard out of the pit, and then Countard's explosive cast did come down a tiny, tiny bit late in that situation. I think Alliance, with a very early dragon and a very aggressive play, they made it work, and they've got themselves nearly a 2,000 gold lead. The stun on Nif, the death sentence was thrown out, didn't land on Forgiven, would have gone through despite the stun already going on towards him. Exactly, and he was fine. Forgiven there to farm out. Forgiven's one of those players that we've seen heavy farming over the last few weeks, taking a massive advantage, but as of yet, Tams has got a good advantage of him. Yeah, I think the lane matchup is part of the reason he's down on CS, and another reason that Forgiven often gets massive CS numbers is because his team feeds him and channels him the farm from the side lanes and that center lane once the roaming starts beginning. Forgiven will go off to the side, grab himself some CS, and then start looking for the team fights, looking for his team to go for the support. As of yet, in the moment, they are continuing to keep that pressure on. Sheen has been picked up now by Wicked. And at the moment, Trinity Force is almost complete. He did just go back, but he didn't complete the item, which is what I was expecting. Instead, just got himself that ward, which is something you don't always see Wicked doing. So maybe this is his team saying, you really need to be warding out that top lane. I also think it signals an intention to maybe extend this laning phase a little more. You know, we've been seeing the pushes back and forth, but Tabs and Nif have not made any effort to go on the tower. You know, they've been poking down, they've been trying to keep Forgiven, uh, denying him CS and just controlling the tempo of that lane, as opposed to trying to force the tower down. But do you see now that Amazing is moving his way towards this middle lane? This could be the first gank it is! Get the belly slam. Oh, the explosive cast sends him the wrong way. Pounce was already being used by Frog and got himself out of danger, no problem. Yeah, the Pounce plus the Flash meant that the explosive cast knocked him to safety, which is a very, very good play. I think uh, Frog and doing well in that middle lane is still down a tiny bit of CS, but in a lane that is sort of favoring Countar for farming, I actually think he's doing well. Now, all of a sudden, it's Countar that's going to get ganked. Here comes Shook. Shook got well in place, but the Cocoon not going to land, and the Spear taken like a man from Amazing. Yeah, Amazing taking one for the team there. Blocking it off for Countar. I think probably going to see uh, uh, Amazing back off in the not-too-distant future. He still hasn't gone back to buy after grabbing himself that Spirit of the Elder Lizard. But for the time being, it's all about uh, Alliance. They're farming up. They're playing this one safely in Shook in a counter jungle as well. He's coming back around towards his bottom lane and it really has been counter. Talked about how he needs to start making those plays and he seems to be working for him. He's just waiting in the bush and you can see Nif ready and waiting with that death sentence. They're going to make their move once again. Shook comes around, the cocoon thrown out. Oh, flashed away. Double pronged attack there. Neither of them landing. One flash for Nif gets both the flashes of Forgiven and Unlimited. Froggen still wants more though. Realizing there's no flashes available, Unlimited and Forgiven could get dope. Spears flash past and the Copenhagen Wolves realize they've got a bit of a problem down this bottom lane. Four members of Alliance are pushing on towards that turret. Repel comes out from Shook, comes straight back in there. 
The Gobnang walls will only defend it for now. Yeah, well, that's the first time that we've seen Alliance making a, a real effort for the tower. We did see Frog in his back the way. He's recalled to pick up his Athenes and Holy Grail and a blue pot. So, signaling a potential fight in the near future. The rest of Alliance, even though they're getting some auto attacks down on the turret, we'll see now what Nif tries to set up. Just holding off for the time being, Cocoon connects, doesn't really matter. Pressure continuing on that tower, and Forgiven taking a lot of abuse there. That's going to be the ace in the hole, blocked off by Unlimited. Just off on the top of your screen, you can see Amazing is close by this time around. We also have Kautard, he's heading down the river right now, but he's going to get spotted out by that ward in the river. Yeah, it depends how quickly Alliance react. They've now backed away, now that they've seen that vision of Kautard. Kautard's still going in by the looks of it. Can he explode them? He goes in, gets the explosive gas, catches Shook out, but immediately takes the lantern from Nif. That was very, very good play. Nif was able to just react and realize, hey, if I get knocked towards the tower, I'm fine. Youngbuck's now being dope. Youngbuck's already used his ultimate, and Wicked's trying to take advantage of that one. Pots a big burst down onto Youngbuck and forces him back to base. So that's what I'm expecting to happen for a while longer. Because Aurelia is going to have the on-hit true damage, and she's building aggressively, in a straight-up 1v1, I think Young Buck is going to continue to lose for a little while longer. He's still going to build toward a Cutlass now, or just picked it up, rather. So that'll help, but I still feel like Aurelia is going to be better in a dueling scenario until Young Buck hits probably a level 13, level 14, gets a Randians completed, and that Blade of the Ruined King. Then it's going to become a lot more interesting in the duel. Well, as expected, you can see Kautard is starting to edge ahead in that farm against Froggen because that Gragas up against the Nidalee. Ooh, Shookbin spotted out there. Froggen quickly playing defensive duty, throwing out them spears to Kautard, not going to land. Back in that top lane, Teleport was used by Youngbuck to actually get himself back in towards that top lane to put pressure back on the tower from Wicked. Shook's going to come in, try and steal away that blue, but not going to work out the bottom lane. Well, Alliance are doing a great job, but it quick, the Timbers on towards Tabs there, forces him away. Nip going very deep. Actually, the turret being tanked out there did stand on towards those traps, but Forgiven does not have the damage. No, Forgiven's only got a Vamp Scepter right now, and I'm, I'm happy you pointed that Teleport out in the top lane because it's not available for the Dragon Fight. Forgiven's going to be dope here by Froggen. Zap lands on towards him. Spear is back up and he's just going to pounce in Google form. Come on towards him. The claws come out and Froggen gets a kill. Almost missing it, but it works out at the end. Froggen grabs himself a kill. They get themselves a tower in the bottom lane. Extend that gold lead. Copenhagen Wolves need to defend the dragon as it's about to spawn in the next 20 seconds. They are able to grab a tower at the very least. A tower trade, but will it be the inner tower oh, wow. for Alliance? They're continuing to push here. Nothing can stop them. And the Copenhagen Wolves, well, with those minions, they will take themselves another tower alliance. And they are really doing a great job here against the Wolves. So this is somewhat of a Fast push team, if I can even use that terminology. Caitlyn, plus the attack speed buff that you're going to get from a Nidalee, and the fact that she's going to be able to put, uh, be very mobile around the map, has allowed Alliance to roam and rotate in this, this middle game area. They've got that tower down, they've got a lot of damage, and now they've set up for Dragon. Amazing is going to look for a steal, but this is going to be risky. Manages to hook it on there. Will he make it in there? You can see he's ready and waiting to go on this one. Still going to have that Sonic Wave. Gets he it. got it! He got it with the Sonic Wave! My god! That is phenomenal, and that is a hashtag LCS big play right there. Sonic Wave connects. That is a tiny bit of damage. If I look at the first proc, that's 210. By a hair, grabs himself that one. Now Youngbuck is going to try to defend the tower. He's got Wicked a little bit. He's managed to chomp down on towards him. Subjugate has been used. He's going Wicked. He's going to run away from this one. Youngbuck's going to try and catch out, but it's a flash from Wicked. So in the 1v1, now that he's got the Giant's Belt and that uh, Cutlass, Wicked, maybe a little nervous, he also wasn't 100% aware of where everybody else was, decides to back away, but they got the tower. So, three towers to one, Alliance have got all outers down for the Wolves. And you can't underestimate how big a play that was, because that would have shifted it to, what, four, five thousand gold advantage for Alliance at 17 minutes in. That is a huge, huge turnaround, just from a single click of the Q key. So, what I think we need to look for now, in these next five to ten minutes, is how the Copenhagen Wolves try to force Alliance to fight. If you look at the 5v5 power, the Gragas, the Annie, the Trundle, is going to work very well for the Wolves if they can get Alliance grouped, if they can force Alliance to either you know, defend a siege or maybe even siege up. Right now, Alliance, they're, they're, they've got the tools to play the map. You can leave Wicked to split push, and you can put Nidalee and Caitlyn on a tower, and that tower's going to go down quickly. And it looks like Alliance, they've started the siege. One thing I will say for Alliance is when Wicked wins his lane, which he has done, he's taken that tower down no problem, 
they normally are a force to be reckoned with. They really are trouble for the opposition, and he has really done very well in that top lane with Aurelia once again. We see the Spears, and the Siege is very much on here for the Copenhagen Wolves. Yeah, right now, Alliance are just trying to get onto this tower. You see Tabs, can tell you throwing up. That's a cost just to clear the minion wave, and a great lantern out. Tower should go down shortly. Oh, Tabs is tanking this one completely out! He's down! And the rocket comes in. He was kind of asking for that one. He took about three tower hits. That, that was a big misplay. I think you, you can't afford to be there. So the problem there, and I'm gonna, I am hate to call him out on it, but Wicked took the lantern before, and Tabs just was like, well, I'm gonna have to tank this one out now, because you've taken the lantern I should be taking. They didn't get the tower either, which is even more important, is the tower was still standing there. The rest of the team backed away. We, we talked in the pregame how Alliance maybe need to get a voice, and that time it didn't work out. Now, Copenhagen Wolves, they've grouped in the top lane. All five members are there, and Froggen is not. It's a quick rotation. You can see that Ice Pillar going down. Youngbook making sure they stay away from this one. An easy turnaround with that top tower. Yeah, right now the Copenhagen Wolves have uh, one tower down, but Froggen is going to continue to play the map. He's going to split push, shove the wave in, and he's immediately going to roam. The mobility of Neely is going to allow him to get in range of this middle tower as the tower is going to get secured on this minion wave. They're yeah, going to take this one down. It just needs a quick one hit, which is what Shook does. And now they're going to keep pushing. They want to go for the inner. Yeah, Copenhagen Wolves, this is a problem. When you force Copenhagen Wolves to react, they sometimes get caught out. Shook's coming in from the side. Oh, amazing, rather. Amazing tries to come in and doesn't have any fancy kicks this time around. Kaltar comes in from the side as well. They wanted Alliance to stick around just a touch longer so they could throw out that explosive cask or manage to kick someone in. But Alliance, quick to react and actually playing very well. Tactically astute today. I think this is what Alliance wants to do with their composition. Because the Caitlyn, as well as Nidalee, can, can really attack towers quickly, as can Wicked on Irelia. If you force the Copenhagen Wolves to roam and rotate, it is something that has beaten the Wolves in the past. Force them to react to your aggressive play. Shook is now invading with the rest of his team supporting. Got to be a little careful because Copenhagen Wolves can start a fight. Yeah, that ooh, spear comes in. Amazing use of the smite to close that one out, making sure they secure it. Of course, that means Alliance are going to run straight for the blue. So blue will now at least be stolen away. So Alliance were challenging for the red. Wicked's been caught up. The rest of Alliance have backed away. And Wicked is actually pretty low, but he's just going to take that lantern once again. And Nif continually throwing out that life-saving device. Copenhagen Wolves, they're rotating. They want to push the mid lane, but Alliance are going to be in position to counter. So Alliance have still had this small lead. You feel like they're controlling the tempo of the game, but Alliance, uh, the Wolves rather, are now grouping up. They grouped up for the top tower. They're grouping in this mid lane. Teleport is available from Youngbuck. So let's see how the Wolves play this one out. Oh, I thought Wicked may well get a little bit too deep here. They're going to go for that blue buff steal themselves. Oh, oh we got it! Tabs returns the favor and keeps the blue buff. That's two blue buffs himself now. Yes, so he stole the previous blue buff away from the Copenhagen Wolves on the retreat and manages to get the pilt over once again, this time on his own blue. So denying that objective, small little wins. The rest of the Wolves, they realize that middle tower is down and there's a three-man stack on this bottom lane. Kautod is not with them. It's just amazing, and the duo lane. Can you imagine the argument between the mid lanes if you really could double stack that though? <laughs> <laughs> I get double the cooldown, double the mana. You've got to give it me. No, not going to happen. Alliance, though, they are looking pretty good in this game against the Copenhagen Wolves, who have, as we mentioned, a five-game win streak and looking to try and stretch that one out. They just saw SK Gaming down, go down. They're looking to try and tie up that third spot. So you have to do, you have to give a little bit of props to the Copenhagen Wolves in this matchup so far. They have secured two towers, they've stolen away a dragon, and the CS in the mid lane is in favor of Kautard, whereas the CS by the AD carries is in favor of Tabs. But I do feel like the Copenhagen Wolves had weaker lanes, if you looked at Trundle, if you looked at Jinx and Annie. So you almost expect them to be a little bit behind as we get to this 20 minute mark. The question is now, how do the Wolves uh, claw back this 2,000, 3,000 gold deficit, and how do they force Alliance into team fights? Right now, Alliance are looking for a pick. The dragon fight is a possibility. Amazing goes in, but he's gone a bit too deep, and Shook just wrecks him where he stands on the help of Tabs. Tabs off of the sides. The Pillar of Ice is actually doing him a great defensive favor. Youngbook flashes in, doesn't realize the tower's still there, and suddenly has to back away in the Wolves while they find themselves in trouble. They're losing out in the top lane, and now they may lose out at Dragon. Yeah, they've lost one for one, but it was the jungler that went down for the Wolves. So if they start off Dragon, it's going to be a little bit risky. Shook was forced low. Teleport used just to defend the tower. They got the summoner spell as well. Keeping themselves the inner turret, it does mean that the dragon will probably be taken by Alliance, but at the moment, they don't seem interested. No, I don't think Alliance are really trying to force a fight around Dragon. And once again, it's because of the power of the Copenhagen Wolves. In a 5v5 scenario, Alliance have slightly less tools to work with. They need to get poked. 
Right now, Alliance have started a counter but wants to steal. The last one was stolen away, but not going to happen this time around. Shook just gets blown away by the explosive cast. Yeah, manages to smite that one. So they secured that dragon, and that was a fairly safe pick. Nobody from the walls is able to react quickly enough. You actually see them in lane. Young Buck teleport to top. kowtar has been caught. He's been stunned out here. Wicked continuing to chase. He's got a lot of burn on towards him. Amazing comes in to try and support him. And if one of those spears were going to come out, if Froggen really wasn't interested in that fight, actually, he just carried on farming at the back. Yeah, Froggen wanted his CS. That was that was what was important to him. We did see uh, Wicked doing very, very well with that Trinity Force just sticking to kowtar And it's it's in part due to the, the fairly easy laning phase that he's had. You know, he was being uncontested. That he was challenging Young Buck several times. I think Young Buck is starting to hit a point where he can start to 1v1 Wicked, but we actually need to see if Young Buck's brave enough to do that. Well, so far we pointed out Amazing and Shook in that featured matchup, but it's definitely Shook the counter. The former Counter K Wolves player is doing a fantastic job so far. Two kills, of course, being involved in everything seemingly for Alliance. But as you mentioned, the Wolves, they are not down and out. It's a 4,000 gold differential, but they are still pushing the lanes. So you have to remember in picks and bans, Copening and Wolves banned out Wukong. They believed or they felt that Wukong was more impactful than banning something like Elise. So Elise was available. We've seen a first pick, Lee Sin, for Amazing. He's 0 1 2 right now. The previous play in that dragon fight, he actually tried to flash over to get a, a Dragon's Rage kick backwards on members of Alliance, but Nif held him in place. He had a good flame and a good death sentence that prevented that from happening. So the Wolves are still looking for an opportunity where they can force Alliance to fight on their terms. And assuming Copenhagen Wolves can start a fight, they've also got the tools to finish that fight. But it is very difficult catching Alliance in a position they don't want to be in. That bottom tower really has not taken a great deal of damage, and Alliance are actually positioning to try and gank this bottom lane, it seems. They are actually being cut out by Kaltard, and suddenly they've realized the danger. They're making a run for it. Yeah, immediately forgiven and limited back away. Alliance have been very brave in the jungle. That's a good flash. Palura Vice catching Wicked out. He didn't want a two-on-one. And I think what Alliance have done very well this game is ward up Copenhagen Wolves jungle and challenge for buffs. Once again, this is going to be a red buff that's stolen away and nobody from the walls can even defend. Not even close by at the moment. It's just simply Kowtard keeping them off this mid lane. All four members, five members now of Alliance, all rotating in towards this mid lane push. They could go for it, or they're going to go straight towards the blue. They know the timers. So Alliance are pretty confident in, in moving as a team. They've got a gold lead. I wonder if they know quite how far it is. That's a max range uh, Nidalee toss. Blue's being stolen. Here comes Youngbuck from the side, but he might be a little late. He's a little late to the party, and well, he does manage to land the Pillar of Voice. The rest of the Wolves are coming in. They want to try and pincer someone off. They're going to throw out the barrels. The Lantern is there. Shook's not going to take it. Unlimited gets caught out completely. He just gets dropped where he stands. Now Amazing's in trouble. Kautar's getting locked up around the side. He's having to run for his life, but Shook comes in. He's trying to sink those fangs in. Has he got the damage? Youngbuck goes down to Frog, and then the Copenhagen Wolves are just floundering right now. It's Alliance in full control, and they're going for Baron. That was a perfect play from Alliance. They stayed grouped up, they stayed tightly knit. The Copenhagen Wolves tried to engage, but they came from two different sides, and those pincer movements have to be uh, pulled off perfectly. It didn't work out for them this time around. Alliance grabbed two kills, they grab a Baron, and now they've got a commanding lead in the game. If Alliance now wants to start the, the Siege game, they've got all the tools available. Look at the Copenhagen Wolves, they completely split up. Uh, split up. Unlimited gets burst out before he can even get Tibbers down on the map. And Alliance are just really zoning out Copenhagen Wolves perfectly. They catch every single member one by one. I don't think we've seen Forgiven doing anything this fight because he had to run away so early on. Somewhat suicidal play from Unlimited there, really. He had flashed that Tibbers available and just wasn't able to do it because he just strolled on into the entire Alliance team. I'm not too sure what he was thinking. Yeah, and I think you also do have to give a high five to Nif. He did land a death sentence as well. He was able to at least, you know, keep them in place a little bit longer with the, with the box. So, you know, it's as much Copenhagen Walls coming in from a poor angle and maybe being a little split up and uh, points to Alliance for capitalizing. They weren't afraid to, to jump in there. They got the kill and then all of a sudden the Wolves were retreating. Well, Alliance now have themselves full control of this matchup. We do see the bottom lane tower finally going down, so Copenhagen Wolves are not down and out just yet. It is a 5,000 gold differential between these teams. And Alliance, of course, with that Baron buff, you'd expect them to be grouping and pushing this mid lane. Yeah, I think they still uh, want you to shove out the rest of the waves. There's an inner turret in the mid lane, an inner a turret in the top lane. In order for the Siege to work for Alliance, I still feel like they need to make sure they've got good vision. 
You know, they, they don't want to run the risk of having uh, uh, Gragas Barrel knock them out of position or, you know, being caught out. Those Nidalee Spears are exactly what's going to help them get the tower down, land one or two, force Wolves back, and there you go, tower. Amazing getting caught out as well. That tower will go down. It's a case of who will they land. The hook not going to go through in there from Nif. You saw some of those big plays that he did earlier on at the start of the show. And really is Alliance in full control right now, pushing on, as you mentioned, there's top wave. Well, it's going to slow push in a moment. It's got a long way off, though. In the bottom lane, we did see Wicked going down there, but he hasn't really shoved it out. So Wicked's got that teleport available. He's moving up to the top lane. Because of the fact that Alliance have got such great poke in the form of Elise, Caitlyn, and Nidalee, they're just going to spam out those skill shots, and assuming they don't eat too many of those Gragas barrels, they can get some poke down. The question is now, can the Cobain Walls engage? It could be a flash Tibbers from Unlimited that starts it off. The Spears are starting to cause problems. You already saw Youngwick there just cutting caught by them on the Spears. They are being forced back away from this turret, quickly doing a dash away. It's like a relay race back to the fountain right now to get that health regenerated. Forgiven himself, he's just trying to lifesteal off the minions. Ooh. But every time they take one of those Spears, it's a danger sign for the Copenhagen Wolves. Yeah, if Kaltard is the one that gets poked down, that's what's going to allow Alliance to actually get the tower. Kaltard is doing such great wave Look at that. Unlimited forced away. So the engage potential is minimized as now Wicked is on that top turret. Yeah, the top turret is going to go down. Wicked, no doubt about that one. And then will they continue pushing through here? It's a good siege from Alliance. They're going to have both top and middle inhibitor being pressured. It takes that lantern. Just gets one shot on their tabs. Make sure he continues it out. Spears continuing to fly in with that blue wolf on with Frog, and it's just going to keep on going. Yeah, when you've got a poke composition like this, when you've got that Caitlyn and Nidalee to deal with, the best way to actually get in their faces is with hard engage. Something like a Vi or a Leona would be good. Copenhagen Wolves are a bit reliant on a sonic wave connecting or unlimited getting a flash Tibbers, and they're being very hesitant. They're just scared of that Baron. They try to go for the flash Tibbers, not going to happen. The flash came out, but Frog was quick to react to that and turns around, tosses a spear in the back of Amazing and Kowtard, well, he wants to maybe try and engage you on those belly slam barrels, but he's having to use that belly slam to get out of the way of the spears. Yeah, he's so scared of taking that poke. We see now that uh, Young Buck moved to the top lane to clear the wave away. Wicked has rejoined in the mid. Now he's on the front line. There is the potential for a dive if Alliance want to go in. Instead, going to back away. Baron's just worn off. All those traps doing wonders and keeping them at bay. And Well, it was a good siege for Alliance. They only got the top in a turret, though. They didn't manage to get a great deal of damage at all. You can see the inhibitor turret barely touched effectively. Alliance though backing off. The rocket was used on the red buff, I think they're trying to catch it out, trying to catch someone away from that one. But the dragon's gonna get picked up by Alliance nonetheless, and the gold will continue to flow. 10,000 gold right now, and Alliance have just got all the tools that they need to control the tempo of the game. We've seen the same thing from uh, Fnatic when they beat Gambit, and I think we're gonna expect more of the same here. Alliance just looking for opportunities on the map, looking for places where they can land some poke, land some siege, and then go for inhibitor turrets. Well, Frog and Pounce is in there. He's going to keep on, steal away that blue buff, and then he will manage to get himself that one away. At the moment, it is Alliance looking strong. Now, as it stands, we do see Alliance once again with those buff steals. I think the last three times that red and blue buff have spawned, they have challenged for them. They've got red twice, they've got, that's the third blue in a row that they've stolen away. Alliance are not letting the Copenhagen Wolves into their own jungle. And it's just very, very good play. Oh, the spear from Frog and nearly taking down Kartart there. Just drilling away his hit points and he's going to have to dash away from that one. As it stands, the only one howling at the moment is Froggen on Italy. He is forcing the Copenhagen Wolves in a dire situation. And we see Wicked picking himself up that Frozen Heart. It's an item we don't see super often. Uh, more, more often than not, we see the Randian's Omen as your primary armor stat. But what I like about it, Trundle, Leeson, and Jinx all have attack speed steroids built into their kit. They all gain additional attack speed. And because they're all very reliant on auto attacks, the attack speed reduction of that Frozen Heart is going to be very useful. Yeah, and you were talking earlier how Alliance have been shoving it into, maybe trying to literally shoving it in the face of the Copenhagen Wars. They want to speed up this fight. You look at Youngbook, he hasn't even completed that Sunfire Cape. He's been sitting on those two uncompleted items for a long period of time, which is why he's not able to shove those wave out. You just saw him down the bottom lane. We see Wicked's going to quickly counter that one. Explosive cask used on Nif, but it's not really going to catch anything out. And they could turn this one back around. Spear lands on Unlimited. The Copenhagen Wolves are running scared 
once again. Another spear comes in. This time it's on Amazing. Death sentence on towards Youngbuk. Youngbuk, the tankiest member of the team. He's just getting drilled down. Amazing takes one for the team. Has to kick Shook away. Nif's going to continue chasing the hook, the hook again on Kaltan. This time around, he's not going to get away. And Alliance are pouncing on the wall. And because of the damage and the rest of the walls, Alliance are going to get their turret and the inhibitor for this one. That was a very, very good play. Great turnaround. Alliance pushing on there. And again, it's Nif creating the plays for Alliance. And the Copenhagen walls are absolutely lost. They don't know what to do here. The Baron is just spawning. Alliance are running for it. I think the Copenhagen Wolves needed that fight a little bit earlier on. We've seen Kautar going for the Flash, Body Slam, Explosive Cast combo, and it didn't work out. Nif was able to get some distance thanks to the Talisman of Ascension. Now all of a sudden Baron has spawned. By the time Copenhagen Wolves get there, they're not even going to try for this one actually. It's going to get secured. The bomb? No. I think somebody tanked it. Yeah, I'm pretty I think, sure somebody I think tanked Froggen it. Took it. took it to the face and just healed himself up there. So they were kind of expecting that one to come in. Of course, he would take it with splash damage, pretty much like the Ash Arrow, I believe. Uh, Significantly more splash damage, <laughs> it's but just, yes, just the, same, the same theory is, is there. So Alliance, they get the second Baron of the game. They've got an inhibitor down in the middle lane. And I think because they've got this poke, because they've got this combo that just wants to basically harass you away and then take the, the, the objective unchallenged, Alliance are just going to rinse and repeat this, either in the top or the bottom lane, allow Super Minions to do the work in the middle, and then pick the fight. So, as it stands, it's the two kills for the Copenhagen Wolves, and really they were very early on in that bottom lane, Alliance and Nif, but Alliance, while it's been a low-scoring kill game, they really have been pouring the pressure on, but the Copenhagen Wolves, and many teams have actually said this, I distinctly remember having conversations with uh, RNA before about Copenhagen Wolves just won't fight you. They'll just keep backing away from those fights. And that's what's happening. The Lions are pushing it, but they can't get hold of the Wolves. No, and that's the problem. The, the Wolves' play style is incredibly safe. It's something that we talk about when we you know, prepare for the shows and we prepare for Copenhagen Wolves games. They don't take risks. They only play safe. Right now, the Copenhagen Wolves are trying to uh, you know, take their own jungle, and it's meant that Alliance have got themselves a very good position on this top turret. The minion wave, unfortunately, wasn't there to back them up, and now the Wolves are here to defend. Super minions are still in the middle of the wave, so Wolves have got a little bit of time. The turrets. Yeah, the siege potential once again. There's spears that are just going to do more and more damage. You can already see Unlimited. He's been chunked down, having to head back to that fountain. We could just try and abide in time. They're using that ace in the hole as well on cooldown. The moment that comes back up, they're getting on towards it. Tabs though, just gets healed up. Look at that. Frog and full heal straight away. And that would have been the perfect moment to go in. Land the slow frog. Wolves aren't there as a five man and limited was healing. We've seen amazing backing off the heal. Now they're looking for another opportunity and Alliance are just going to keep rinsing and repeating this, getting auto attack, auto attack, healing the little bit of poke that comes down and then waiting for that key moment to either grab the objective or force the fight. Of course, with that Baron buff, they're just waiting. Kautar desperately wants to get in there. Belly slam, throw out that explosive cast, but not able to do it. Try cast the uh, area of these built over traps keeping them at bay and slowly but surely that turret is going down there was the explosive cask it did next to nothing they're going deep they get the timbers down there tabs is going to be the focus but then they can't get him down you can see young he's going in he gets hooked up by nif shook's taken pretty low this is not a bad turnaround for gibbons trying to put the damage down but again just not enough all of the damage was not on the carries it was wicked and shook it was focused down look at that ace in the hole now alliance on the turret that's the ad carry taking a single ability there from the opposition and he just can't face it. They've got super minions coming in the mid lane while this is all happening. Alliance will back out. I feel they maybe, maybe could have finished the game there. Yeah, Alliance playing this one safe. I think there's no real reason to risk it. They can back away, spend whatever money they've got, take control of the jungle again, and then just go for that final push. The thing that I liked about Alliance's play there was that they didn't put themselves in any risk at all. They waited for some poke to, to land and backed away. And Kautod's explosive cast, it did nothing. It a did absolutely nothing in that scenario. And you can't have that when that is one of your key initiation tools. Yeah, it's a bit of a problem. Alliance taking down that dragon while Tabs effectively doing it all on his own. And now it's a 15,000 gold advantage. Tabs. That's brave. Ooh, that is very brave of him when he's only got that single bit of coverage. Of course, the rest of his team are joining him, so he kind of felt comfortable 
He could have just used that 90 caliber net and Copenhagen Wolves are going to try and set a trap. There's a timing limit on this because there's super minions going top and middle lane. If Copenhagen Wolves are held into an extended fight and Alliance can delay them, the minions will get onto the Nexus turret. Wolves are backing away. Wolves not quite sure in their selves here. This is a little discussion that you can see it's actually forgiven. He's like, I'm going to stand in this one. Let's avoid the bush, which is what they did. Oh, but the ward spots them out there. And now they go headlong into a spear. And Alliance are happy to take this one. They've still got that Baron buff. I tell tell Light just ran out there. Froggen, though, gets caught out with a zap. They haven't got the pace to catch on towards them. And Liberty's going to get tingled out again. Ace in the hole. Will the spear land? Oh, it will, but it's not enough. That shield just about holding on. But now we see the rest of Alliance sieging up. They're onto the final inhibitor turret. We see here, uh, Wicked on Aurelia. He's in the mid lane on the inhibitor. This is going to be a, 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 an attack on two fronts. The Wolves can't deal with it on one front. Youngbook's going to cross to try and keep him at bay there, but I'm not too sure he's really got the power in him. Front. Kautar just dodging out. He gets caught by the Cocoon. The Spear is not ready to follow on. Frogging a little bit delayed on that one. Meanwhile, in that mid lane, still Wicked causing all sorts of problems for Youngbook. He hasn't even popped that Banshee's Veil yet. He just keeps hammering away on him with that club. Forgiven is back now. They are going to keep this tower safe for now. So the wave clear is pretty good from Kautar. He's able oh. to at least delay this, but look at the life regen for Tabs plus the heal from Froggen. They're already back up to full HP and Alliance are just going to keep doing this one. The inhibitor is still standing in the mid lane. With that rocket down from Forgiven, it means they're going to go for it. Amazing tries wow. to go in there, but well, the Death Sense has just pulled him straight in. Tibbers comes out, does next to nothing. The spears continuing to flow from Froggen. The tower will be beaten down. We can do see Wicked coming in around the side. That was just absolute destruction. Kautar didn't even know what hit him there. Forgiven gets annihilated. And Alliance are just going to push on through and take this game. It was a five-game win streak for the Copenhagen Wolves. But now they've met Alliance. And Alliance take the victory over the Wolves. A very good play from Shook. He lands the cocoon on Amazing, preventing any form of initiation. Alliance, a controlled game, a slower game. But they played it perfectly. And this is the second day running the Copenhagen Wolves have had such control in their game. And again, you've got to give credit. The top lane, Wicked, won out that lane fair and square, dominated it. And when he's not really a problem, the rest of the team, they just can do the deal with themselves. Great work from Shook there this time around. Absolutely outplaying amazing. 4-0-5 for that mid lane. Every single member of Alliance did what they needed to do that game. Elise made it through, and we keep harping on about Elise because she's banned so frequently and specifically against Shook. It's something we've seen many, many times. And some round Shook made it work. His cocoons were landing, he was ganking when new to it, and truthfully, that just helped him win. Their, his lanes was doing it for them. You know, Wicked did well in the top lane, Tabs had lifted well in the bottom lane, and it was just an all round very good performance from Alliance. Yeah, 0 2 2 for the Lee Sin this time around on Amazing. It was their first pick. This time around, very well played by Alliance. Froggen, very happy about that one. This is the team that he put together himself. He had the pick of the European superstars, effectively. Everybody wanted to be on this team. These are the players that he chose, and they are finally starting to find their feet. It's in week eight. Is it too late? So the thing that I like about this, 